Hey, well, welcome back to Allison Customs Project Car TV. Doing a recap on my heating system and how it worked out for the winter. Uh, basically, I'm gonna try and answer questions that came up. I, I tried to answer comments as they came along, but you know, sometimes the detail is lost or more questions came or the same question came over and over and over. Starting with, uh, it's currently April 5th, I believe. A um, little windy out today, but it's warmed up. And for the most part, the heating system has not had to run maybe more than an hour or two in the middle of the night um, for the last, probably going on two weeks. And that's just because the daytime temperatures have continued to come up. Today, the high was about 75. Uh, the thermostat is still set at 60 degrees. Right now, saying the floor is at 63. Uh, the temperature in here is obviously comfortable enough for short sleeves and I've got the doors open It's a little windy. So you're probably gonna hear a little bit of that noise in the background uh, Beyond that I have not changed a single thing on the system since the end of the last video. I Do have some plans for what I'd like to do um, Other than maybe I insulated this pipe. I don't know it, I don't believe I've changed anything since the end of the last video uh, the water heater is running off two elements, both of them 5,500 watt, so I'm pulling 11,000 watts. Um, I, I think I mentioned that in the last video, but pulling 11,000 watts. They are on two separate circuits. I really don't want to get into how I wired that because I don't want to encourage somebody who's not uh, knowledgeable on how to run your wiring to do something. You should just probably hire an electrician. There's, There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing unsafe about it. As long as you have both of the uh, heating elements thermally protected and uh, on breakers. So they're on separate breakers. They both have thermal switches and everything works just the way you would think it should. Just you've, you're burning a lot of electricity. So in the meantime, um, my system is running right around 20 two to 24 psi kind of what i notice is just a little bit of temperature variation uh, i still have not done anything with my third pump or my fourth uh system you know where i could add more to the system basically we are taxing the hot water heater during the middle of the winter to the limit it it honestly is not enough heat source for a shop this size and to answer some questions people had the shop is 50 by 80. Um, the bay I'm standing in right now is bare dirt because I've never come through and put all the heat loop and poured concrete here just because of the expense I've been doing this building all for cash. So this section does not help with heating the building, which means essentially a fourth of my building is not helping to heat the building probably would not help anyway because i'm sure we would we've already taxed out this water heater we could probably add a second one in line i did keep my uh my thermal switch in place so that the pumps would turn on and off based on the outlet temperature of the water heater and that just allowed the water heater to have time to catch back up as it turns out it would run for about uh 42 minutes once the floor got up to temperature. So bringing it up to temperature, it, it cycled pretty often. Um, but once the, syst once the floor was up to temperature and it just needed to maintain that, the system honestly would not ever hit the thermal switch limit. The water heater could produce enough hot water going out or hot antifreeze going out that the returned uh, antifreeze was not triggering or cooling the system off so rapidly that the water heater couldn't keep up with it. That reminds me, for all of you who caught me saying hot water heater, yes, I know that's a water heater and that you don't have any reason to heat hot water. So, I don't know. I do pick on people who say stuff like that too. I don't know why I said it. I've probably said it twice during this video already. But the water heater, which is producing hot water or hot antifreeze, functioned adequately throughout the winter. It kept the shop at a very comfortable temperature. On the coldest of days, I would run my kerosene torpedo heater and it would kick in for about 30 minutes when I first got into the shop. 
and then it would kick about every hour or two it would bring the temperature up and I was keeping the temperature maybe around closer to 70 degrees with that torpedo heater but it would only run for the you know six to eight hours that I was in the shop on any given day it wasn't needed very often maybe once in a while and even then the hot water heater could keep up with it for about 42 to 45 minutes and then it would have to kick off cycle for about 30 to 35 minutes before it could this thermal switch would open back up and let the pumps run again so it it with 11,000 watts running through that hot water with 11,000 watts running through the water heater uh, it was doing an adequate job of heating this big shop other things let's see let me go through some of these questions okay so one of the other questions was are the floors heat uh, insulated yes so my slab is roughly probably averages seven inches thick and has all the tubing in it remesh wire that it's all tied to and then there's insulation underneath it i believe it's an r7 or r8 uh insulation it's fairly thin but it's a fairly expensive insulation to get to get it thin and be that quality people said that hey a mixing valve would probably help i think that's probably true especially as i uh, work on the system going into the future other people suggested um, instant hot water heaters, instant hot water heaters, instant water heaters, yeah, instant hot water heaters. I don't know how you say that one. I looked at those. Most of the ones I found that I that would actually do more than the 11,000 watt, you know, I mean, like they're into the 20,000 watt or whatever, they are better. They would be better for that. The power draw would be the downside because of the service that I have coming into this building. I basically couldn't have that running and use any of my equipment as far as welders or something like that because I only have a 100 amp service to the building. So if I'm drawing uh, 60, 70, 80 amps for the water heater of whatever style, then I wouldn't have any room to be out here cutting, grinding, welding. Uh, 11,000 watts, if you do the math, and I've done it in the past and I've already forgotten, but basically we're drawing about uh, 40 to 45 amps. We could do the math again. Anyway, it leaves me some, some room to be able to do other work while I'm in here and then this thing is kicking on and off on the colder days. Yes, I did a heat loss on the building and yes, I'm aware that the water heater was not really sufficient. Um, but that was what I had um, and that's what I used. It did work, it's not the most efficient way. Uh, also, yes, gas, uh, natural gas, propane would be a better choice. Um, I don't have a place for a large propane tank here that somebody could pull in and fill it and meet all their other requirements of distance from buildings and outhouses and or outbuildings and all that. So that kind of negated that one um i don't have natural gas this far onto the property and that might be a solution in the future um as we have other stuff we have to do on the property a lot of people said wood stoves wood boilers those are great ideas i don't have the desire to go out and have to uh maintain a wood a wood stove or a wood boiler in that i have to constantly come in here and feed wood I like the fact that I can leave all my stuff in here, close the doors, and the shop stays 60 degrees day in, day out. I can be on a trip for four or five days, come back, the shop's the same temperature, and it required zero maintenance on my part. Uh, a wood boiler or a wood stove, you know, the wood stove, you're only going to have heat when you're feeding it, and a wood boiler is basically the same way. Um, and I'm not going to ask uh, family to take on that responsibility just so I can have a shop heated that I'm not even currently using. But one of the tricks with the radiant floor is once you get the floor up to heat and all of the things that are sitting on that floor come up to heat, you really should not let it cool back down by changing the thermostat or turning it off and then have to go through that cycle of heat up again uh, a week later. Yes, I'm very familiar with the uh, in-floor hot water systems, the hydronic system. I have one in my home and I've had it for over 20 years. And yes, a boiler would be better. Okay, most of the rest of these deal with cost and solar. So future plans. Um, I, it was recommended that I put some dielectric 
uh, unions into the system just to isolate the water heater a little better. That will be coming with the next upgrade or the next change. Uh, additionally, I am planning to add, and have from the very beginning planned to add solar. So it will be on the roof of the shop and I have a system designed or had a system designed by a solar company. So I know what we're going to be buying. I know how we're going to do it. We're, one of the things that will happen is we will be putting in a tank that has two coils in it and it's a big giant storage tank. I think we're going with a thousand liter uh, and you could do the gallons, but I think that's roughly 400 ish, 375 gallons, something like that. So it's going to take up a fairly large area for that tank. The one that they've described to me looks like a giant water heater. So that will go somewhere in this area. I didn't originally do my floor plan uh, that's that's supposed to take up this space because you may recall from the other video this is supposed to be a bathroom eventually. I didn't originally do the floor plan to house a container that large so we'll have to do a little modifications on that. But we haven't put in all the plumbing or anything else yet for that. So that's to come. And what it's going to be uh, I think they're called evaporative tube solar panels and they are hydronic so I'm not doing PV or uh, uh, or electric. Uh, I'm going to do hot water solar panels to just for heating the shop. The nice thing and the one of the reasons I'm going to have that big storage tank with the extra coils is during the summer um, our climate is still fairly cool well into the summer so we can transfer that over and we have a swimming pool that the grandkids use and we can heat the pool earlier in the year and into later into the year when it starts cooling off again and make it more usable um, adding to that adding to the value there so the system will get used two ways it'll still have the the shop will still have uh, antifreeze in it and the panels will have antifreeze in it and then we can cycle pool water through one of the other coils um, additionally I still really really want to add a waste oil boiler and that would then replace the water heater so probably only going to be able to do one or the other this next year because of the price uh, and I'm going to choose solar first just because that will offset the cost of heating dramatically. We have 300 plus clear sky days a year here. And so for next year, we'll continue to have the water heater as our backup. It reminds me, yes, somebody recommended putting a blanket around it. So I am going to try and locate one of those, get that done. That seemed like probably a good idea. Now on to the cost. So, cost here where I'm at for electricity does not change day or night it's a it's a straight rate throughout and it's 0 0.1001 dollars or 10.01 cents per kilowatt if you do the math I'm using 11,000 kilowatt hours just to run the hot water heater at any given time so it's a dollar and 11 ish cents per hour that that runs 25 plus dollars a day. My electric bill for the worst month of the year, just the add on for that water heater. No worry, you know, I mean, I'm estimating the value there because I'm based off of previous years with lighting and heat, never, or not heat, but lighting and tools running and welders running. So my best estimate, based on the math and everything else, was $650 additional to my normal electric bill for the winter to run that water heater for one month and that was during the coldest month. I had two months that were very similar temperatures and one of them ran, at, we estimated right at $630, the other one was $580. So it's right there, it's $600 a month to run that water heater to heat this shop. That is not a long term uh, sustainable, right? I mean, you can do it for a winter, you can do it for a couple months, and really, you could only do it if either you're independently wealthy or you've got a working shop where I can, I'm doing enough work out here. The first 10 ish hours that I come out to the shop every month is just covering the heat bill. Again, not super sustainable. So, 
that's the reason we're going to solar. I figure based on those numbers, if I can offset that by 80, 90%, which is based on our, our area, the amount of sun we get, that was what the engineers at the solar company and I kind of estimated that we could offset was probably in the 90% range, which means that the water, the heating of water with this water heater would probably come in closer to 65 to maybe $120 in a month. And if we're in that range, that's long-term sustainable. And the $500 a month that is offset from that um, will pay for even over just a three or four month window. That's two grand a year, let's say over four months. That will pay for the whole system in seven years. And the life of the system is closer to 18 years. So you can see it won't be very long and we're well ahead on money. And then once it's kind of, if you will, making money, um, it will be easier to uh, knuckle under and go ahead and get the, the waste oil boiler system set up, which needs an exhaust stack. That was the other reason I didn't want to do anything too early that was going to need exhaust because I don't know exactly what I need for that waste oil boiler and I really don't want to be cutting a whole bunch of holes in the, the roof of the building or the sidewall of the building to run exhaust stacks that then I got to take out and change and rebuild or fix a hole or whatever, you know, so I'd like to get it one time in one location. It's a lot of talking. So I hope I've answered everybody's questions. Thank you all for watching. First video I ever had that went over 100,000 views was all about this system and how I built mine. Um, one more comment I got was on the shark bite fittings. They, I've used them for years and years. That's how I knew about them. My plumber used them whenever he did uh, work that was gonna be exposed. In many jurisdictions, if not all now, they are uh, approved for in-wall uh, installation where you can't see them. So I don't have any fear of them leaking. And in this condition where I can see it all, even if I had one that did leak, it's not that big a deal to come back in and replace one. Um, this system isn't critical to anything. It's not like your home where your home is needing to be heated and you would worry that you had one of these leaking and you needed to turn your heat off for a day or two while you fixed it. When in fact, really, if you had to turn it off for a whopping hour to fix it, I would be shocked. Yes, if you can solder copper fittings, which I've since played with a few times. I feel pretty comfortable that I could probably do it now with, with no problem. If you did that, you would find that the system would be substantially cheaper because the fittings that are copper that are, that you can solder versus the fittings that are shark bite are substantially cheaper. It just takes longer to put the whole system together. So I think that's all I had to add. I hope that answers everybody's questions. Thank you all for watching not only this video, but the previous video on the system. And I'll see you again next time on Alice and Custom's Project Car TV.